Welcome to lesson five of Hebrew one and two. Last session we covered nouns and adjectives. Today we're going to be discussing pronouns, so let's jump right in. A pronoun is basically a word that takes the place of a noun. Remember that a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. A pronoun is simply a stand-in for that person, place, thing, or idea. Instead of Kyle, we would say him or he. For Michelle, we would say her or she. For a giant tomato, we would say it. As with nouns in Hebrew, pronouns in Hebrew are either singular or plural, masculine or feminine. There is no neuter in Hebrew. It is generally masculine unless specified as feminine. There's also no dual pronoun. As with adjectives modifying dual nouns, the plural pronoun is used with true duals. Egypt, sea, heavens, all of which are dual in form, Mitzrayim, Yamayim, Shamayim, will most likely have singular pronouns since they are not actually two, but one simply taking the form of a dual. Pronouns also come in several different types. There are pronoun suffixes that are attached directly to a word, usually to mark an object or a subject, which we will look at in our next lecture. Our focus today is on independent pronouns, pronouns not attached directly to a noun. There may be a makaif that attaches the word to a pronoun, that floating dash hyphen looky thingy that you'll see later, but there is still a space between the pronoun and the word that the pronoun is paired with. Independent pronouns may be demonstrative, this, that, these, those, interrogative, who, what, whom, or relative, which, or that, all the same as English. So let's dig in. We will begin with the independent pronouns. This chart should be memorized, but think of the words more as vocabulary words than as a chart, since the forms do not really change. Also notice that there is no first person masculine as opposed to a first person feminine. First person is simply first person, so we call it first person common, since the form covers both genders. You will also notice that the third person forms look very similar. A simple way to remember the singular forms is the saying, he is she, who is he. For the plural forms, you will notice that just as with the masculine plural ending of nouns, the masculine has a mem. Note this well because the pattern is true of nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and verbs. When you see a mem, the form is always masculine. Convenient, mem for masculine. On the other hand, feminine pronouns in the plural third person always take a nun, that's slightly different than the kametz he or the holom tav for nouns, but will be true for verbs also. Feminine takes a nun, feminin. So on a pronoun, even if you see the kametz he, you need to check to see if there is a mem or a nun to identify masculine and feminine. Demonstratives are this, that, these, those. Demonstrative pronouns are pronouns, meaning that they're taking the place of a noun. For instance, instead of I want tomatoes, I would say I want those. The pronoun those stands in place for the noun tomatoes. Notice that the demonstrative pronouns on this chart for that and those, masculine and feminine, are the same as the independent pronouns, meaning that he and she may also be translated if necessary as that, and them can actually be those. Context will give away which to use. The plural masculine and feminine are also the same as each other, these, which means only one form to learn, which is always nice. The singular masculine and feminine, this, should be simple to memorize, ze for masculine, zot for feminine. However, demonstratives, as in English, can be used as pronouns or as adjectives. This is the man uses this as a subject and is therefore a pronoun, this standing in place of man. However, this man uses this to describe the word man and is an adjective. Which man? This man. The word looks the same in Hebrew as in English, so usage will tell you how the word is being used. Remember, adjectives are used attributively and will agree in gender, whether masculine or feminine, number, whether singular or plural, and definiteness, a or the. Adjectival demonstratives will also typically follow or come after the word they are modifying. Demonstrative pronouns, on the other hand, typically come before the word they are paired with. 
and are used predicatively, agreeing in gender and number, but not in definiteness. In other words, adjectival demonstratives act like adjectives. Demonstrative pronouns act like nouns. Even in chains of connected words, word order and definiteness is the key to identification. In a string of adjectives, demonstrative adjectives will come last after all other adjectives. Demonstrative pronouns will come first, even before the first word in the chain. Again, adjectives will agree in definiteness with the rest of the chain. Demonstrative pronouns will not agree in definiteness. In English, we have two relative pronouns, which and that. In Biblical Hebrew, we have only one, a share, which can be translated as either that or which. The form does not change until late Biblical Hebrew, such as the Song of Solomon, or occasionally in the Psalms, in which case the word is simply the shin by itself. The relative pronoun a share also does not attach to the word directly, only with a makaif, the floating hyphen looky thingy. You will get used to seeing a share throughout the Old Testament as it is easily one of the most common words. Interrogatives ask a question, what or who. A good way to remember the term interrogative is to remember that these words interrogate, what, who. Like the relative pronoun, they do not attach directly to a word, only attached with a makaif. Note that the form of ma may also be meh, or ma with a patak instead of a comets. Just get used to seeing mem and he. Don't worry too much about the vowels. A word that has a mem and a he before it generally will mean what. Context will also tell you if you're asking a question. The interrogative particle is basically the Hebrew question mark, only it comes at the beginning of the question, sort of like the upside down question mark in Spanish that comes at the beginning of the sentence. However, in Hebrew, the question may not come at the beginning of the sentence, but will be at the beginning of the question, which may be in the middle of the sentence. Again, context will tell you if you have a question. Vowels, again, change slightly, but most of the time it will be he with a patak shva. The shva drops before gutturals, just leaving he patak or he segol. The fact that the schwa in the patak schwa drops in the interrogative particle before gutturals may seem to create a bit of a problem, because this makes the interrogative particle look like the definite article with the he patak. The dagesh in the letter following the definite article is a key, except in words that start with he and chet, which only take a dagesh implicitly. The actual dagesh will be missing. With the gutturals ayin, he, and chet with the comets, the form of the definite article is identical to the interrogative particle, before words starting with a guttural with a comets. Sure, there should be a metheg, that little line next to the segol, to let you know that it's different, but the Hebrew Bible is notorious for leaving out the metheg. What if we forget the rule that the he patak is before skinem levi letters for the definite article, but before all vocal schwas for the interrogative particle? These look so familiar, how do we tell the difference if we can't remember the rule? Before you panic, there are four simple differences. Usually, although both have the letter he, the vowel pointing is typically completely different and you'll be able to tell the difference between the two based on the vowels. Second, the interrogative does not have a dagesh forte in the following letter. The only trouble in identification really is when there is a guttural. In which case, remember that usually the interrogative particle is on a verb, the definite article is only on nouns. Definite articles, the, cannot be affixed to verbs. Finally, and fourthly, remember that question marks are only on questions. Does the phrase that you're translating make sense as a question? If so, the interrogative particle at the beginning is probably an interrogative particle. If it's not a question, that hey is probably the definite article. If you remember these four simple questions, you will rarely get the two confused. As amazing as it may seem, we are already at the end of this session's lecture. Be sure to learn the necessary vocabulary and check out the quizzes on Quizlet.